Kevin Nagandi, uh, ESPN Sports Center anchor, who was there covering the parade as a guy who grew up around this team. And it just had to be a surreal day for you yesterday, Kevin. Mike, Pete, it's been a surreal week, man. <laughs> uh, very little sleep. Um, I'm I'm struggling to get my voice back. I don't think I'm going to have it back. Uh, I lost it well, well into uh, Sunday's experience, and it's been great. I mean, uh, yesterday you guys mentioned running the Rocky Steps, you know, at I'd say 7.30 in the morning. It's me and Sal Pal running up the steps. Uh, you know, and, and and just looking at each other like, this is pretty cool. And I think every single moment this week has been one of those, this is pretty cool. We had Brandon Graham and Malcolm Jenkins in the studio this morning, and they were phenomenal. Um, and they, they represent uh, the Eagles and the city and the passion of fans really well, and uh, I can't speak better about them. And, and, and you know what? I think that's the charm of what this team – uh, has with this city we are we are really proud of that team and the players and the entire organization has uh has done an amazing job and um you know you just you just don't wake up <laughs> you, you, you want to make sure this continues and i think the parade i'll say one more thing i think the parade made it reality for everybody because sunday was was like the greatest thing ever. And then you, you, you're like, all right, the next day you wake up and you're like, that happened? And I went through that, guys. I watched the game four times after Sunday. I came home and I was like, I got to see exactly what exactly happened. Because you watch it in the stadium for a perspective, and then you want to see certain things uh, to kind of assure what you saw on the field. And then I watched it four times. And then going through the parade yesterday, I was like, okay, it's reality now. Um and it's, it, I love reality. Yeah. And uh, being a Philadelphia sports fan, you don't say that often. No, no, you don't. And uh, I think a lot of Eagles fans still don't know that the reality has set in. But I know for sure that the parade and yesterday and everybody there, that, that feeling of, oh, my gosh, we did this. And, you know, I, I, is there a moment in that parade that it sunk in? I know you were covering the parade, but was there something that happened during the parade you know, there's so many callers yesterday that we had that said, like, when Doug came down Broad Street and he's holding that thing up, that's when it hit me. When you watch some of these local uh, fans just uh, watching this happen, did you say, wow, this is when it hit some of these people? Uh, you know, I, I think, uh, obviously, Mike, when, when the, the buses are going down the street, you could see it. Now, where I was stationed by the Art Museum steps um, – you know, I think the crowd that and the crowd was phenomenal from 4 a.m. on. The crowd that we were with and from the beginning, and we could see it get bigger and bigger and bigger. I, I think that when the team came down the steps and they were introduced, and and then you you, you have you know Dave talks Padero and and Merrill has his chance to talk, which I love. I gave I love that they gave him the opportunity after 41 years that he was waiting for that moment. He I identify with Merrill the same way I think everybody used to identify with Harry, Harry the K. Um, so, like, when those guys, you know, came up and all, but, but really, I, I think I think our iconic moment is the moment everybody talks about with Jason Kelsey when you were like, yeah, you know what, we're champs. Uh, how we did it, what he explained, the underdogs, and, you know, the message to everybody outside of Philadelphia if you're not with us. Um it, there was a lot of emotion. A lot of it was like, hey, man, he, he can go right to the WWE or even the XFL down the road in his next career. But it was one of those combustible moments where it was like, yeah, we are champs. And kind of similar to what it was 10 years ago with Chase Utley. Now, Kevin, everybody saw on SportsCenter you uh, rip your shirt open, had the Eagles logo underneath and your Eagles T-shirt underneath and said, I got to go, I'm out of here. Did you get to the game in time, or were you a little bit late, but at least there in time for the celebration? Uh, <laughs> so, Pete, so here's the deal. Like, while this is going on, I had three people at ESPN, you know, when I when I do whatever I did and I leave, and, and I legitimately, uh, I'm trying to catch a flight. Uh, I had been working on it for a week and a half, all the logistics, <laughs> And I had to catch two flights. The key was I got to get to LaGuardia. I got to get there in time. Well, I was ahead of schedule, and I'm like, uh oh, this is too easy. I'm in LaGuardia, and then three people at ESPN were like, you need to make sure 
everybody on social media knows what's going on because you left the show and they are all hanging on your final word. They want to know if you made it. And I'm like, and I told Pete, I told uh, you know my friends, I'm like, no one cares. No one cares uh, what I just did. And they're like, no, people genuinely are paying attention. Right. And I found that out when I opened up my Twitter account and I'm in the car and I'm like, oh my God, people, they, they want me to get to this game. All right, I'm going to keep some updates. So I get the LaGuardia and I'm ahead of schedule. I catch the flight to go to Detroit and I am ahead of schedule, but it's snowing in Detroit. And I'm like, okay, but I get to the terminal and the plane is there. So, you know, sometimes you worry, you're like, if the plane's not there, I'm screwed. Like, yeah. if the plane's not coming in, I'm screwed. But the plane is there, and I go to the front desk. I'm like, everything's going well. He's like, yep, the plane's there. But it's snowing. And I look at my Delta app, and the Delta app says I'm going to get in town 12 minutes ahead of time in the Minneapolis. And I'm like, okay, don't panic, Kev. They, they built in this time. So you get on the plane, still 12 minutes. I'm going to keep on refreshing. I'm like, everything's still going. Everything's going. We're going to go. We have to de-ice the plane. Well, that is now, important. Now, <laughs> I'm not, yeah, I'm not, I'm not criticizing that. that. That's just reality. But there was another plane that was in front of us that had to de-ice. So I sat on the tarmac in the plane for 50 minutes. Oh, my God. Extra. That was the delay. And now I'm like, instead of getting there at 449 local, which kickoff is 530, I'm now looking at potentially, uh-oh, I'm going to miss. A lot. I had already <laughs> come to the conclusion I'm going to miss halfway through the first quarter. So we land at 5:15. I'm running through the airport, and at one point, somebody's like, "You're going to the game?" I'm like, "Cause I'm on Eagles gear," and I'm like, "Yes, please move." Yeah, get out of the way. And, uh, <laughs> I, I, and I get an Uber, and this kind, you know, older uh, lady picks me up, and she's in a you know minivan, and I'm like, "I will give you the best tip of your life. Just get me to the stadium." And she was so sweet. She was doing her best. But suddenly we're we're going, like, below the speed limit. Cars are passing me. And I'm like, please, go, please. And the redemption, I will give her the redemption here. So, you know, the security around the stadium was so ridiculous. She found two back roads to get me closer. And that was huge. And I made sure to take care of her and, and – um, you know, I got in there, and the cool thing is I was getting, like, tweets, and I was getting texts from my wife and my brother about the game. Right, they're like, all right, the Eagles scored the field goal, had a great drive, and then, you know, the Patriots, they just got stopped, and they're going to kick a field goal. So I was like, okay, I get to my seat with my best buddy uh, from college, Keith Scripping, next to me, went to Temple. Oh, Keith, he's yeah. already there. Yeah, and he's already there, and I sit down, and it's the drive where LeGarrette gets the, you know, the ball and he has a big run. And literally, I am settled in, and Alshon scores the touchdown. And that's when I was like, it's going to be a good day. So <laughs> I got in there around five minutes left in the first quarter, and you know, the rest is history. Um, and uh, it, was, it was a night. To, we didn't sleep the rest of the night. Yes. Uh, we, we went to the, the post party, and I went straight. I, I came to the hotel closed my eyes for 20 minutes, which you're not really sleeping, and then I went to the airport and caught a flight back, and uh, that's how the week's been. What an epic story. Yes, I saw pictures. I saw you about the Thomas boys at that post-game party. My brother and sister-in-law were there as well, so partying it up in Minneapolis. Just an unbelievable story there out of Kevin Nagani, my pal from Temple, and a national ESPN anchor. You see him all the time on Sports Center. So uh, it ends with the parade, Kevin, but we got to know who won that race up the steps, the Rocky Steps. You were Sal. Because <laughs> hang on. We're, we're, here's Sal's side of the story, okay? Here's you know, what, I kind of let him here's what make Sal, it an even race. I didn't want to throw him up on the steps. So I, I, I you know. He was lagging behind, and I kind of slowed down a little bit. You tell him I said that on the air, okay? <laughs> former Navy man Actually, and a former why you, why you, why don't you play that for him and say, here's what Sal said about uh, the Rocky Step. <laughs> uh, we got that. <laughs> there you go, buddy. Uh, I, love, I love Sal. You know, it, it, Sal's, Sal's final words to me before we went up the steps, he goes, Let's go at the same pace. And I knew what that was saying. <laughs> Don't show me up, brother. <laughs> uh, and, you know, you know we, we, we had a good pace going up, and then he's like, let's pick it up. And I was like, I got you, Sal. I, don't worry. I'm not going to – we're going to do this together. And I love Sal. Sal Sal's – there's no one better than Sal, Pal. And, and um, being around him and, and being, uh, being a part of the broadcast yesterday with him, 
um, was pretty special. It's a day that we both looked at each other and said, we won't forget it, man. We're very lucky to be in this business. Um, real fast, Kevin, because you said the, the, the Eagles are in Bristol today, and you got a chance, you know, are, are they still glowing? I mean, you're with, uh, what, Graham, who, uh, you know, has the strip sack, uh, Jenkins. You know, are these guys still glowing today? Yeah, you know, um, Brandon it was like a kid in a candy store. Um, we had a couple of nice side conversations, and you, you, he's just so genuine about the whole thing. And, you know, um, Malcolm and, and Malcolm and I are friends, and, and Malcolm was like, Kev, I haven't slept. <laughs> <laughs> and I can tell like, it, it's been a whirlwind of a week for these guys. And, and that, that, that just describes it. I think that Malcolm was so good at telling us some, some, um, I think he, he took us behind the curtain a little with a couple of his stories and, uh, which I was grateful for that he could open up and talk to us about it. Um, and you guys know that that's about just relationships and, and, and Malcolm trusts me. So we had, we had a good time talking. I mean, Sports Center gave us uh, 11 minutes to talk about it, and it flew by with the details and information about the whole experience and what you know the Philly special was about, what the defense was thinking, what the defense was thinking when Brady had the ball with two minutes left, and um, they were great. They they still can't believe it, but at the same time, Malcolm on Sunday night, I saw him at the after party, and he was like, "I cannot wait to go back," and he meant going back to to, to Philly. And I brought it up to him, uh, and he was just like, "It was, it was incredible." And I, and I think that the crowd yesterday blew them away, and and Brandon appreciated that um, because he knows that this city is so different. I told him, I said, "You, you, you'll never have to buy a drink again. You know that, right?" And Brandon's like, "I've already experienced it." I'm like, <laughs> "Well, get ready for the rest of your life." Crazy. So these guys, they these guys understand um, the Philly mentality and how much we love football. Uh, Kevin Agandi, living the dream there. Uh, Sports Center Sunday morning, Super Bowl Sunday night, parade yesterday. Sports Center this morning, the Philadelphia Eagles are Super Bowl champions. Kevin, we appreciate you sharing the stories. That South Pal audio was from about ten minutes ago. He, he was ten minutes ahead of you, so he says he beat you. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna text him because. We got a kick out of that. I'll, I'll let him know. Or he was like, hey, uh, keep the pace with me, Kevin. <laughs> yeah. so I'll let him know. Kevin, thanks so much, man. It's been a pleasure. All yeah, right. Kevin Agandi, everybody. Care, ESPN Sports Center anchor, a uh, Temple grad.